minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I can look through old photographs, Robin, and I can see pictures of my mom and dad, and I say, gosh, I'm older now than they were then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do you do the same thing? Yeah, I I'm do. I'm older I now than they were then. Yeah. I'm, I'm older than my parents. Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not older than they became. They, they, got, they, grew, they died in their 80s, and I'm not there yet. No, no. But I'm getting Thank there. God. I'm actually enjoying this time of my life, though. I'll be honest with you. I, I really am. I, yeah. I, I think I'm, I'm fine with it. I are, think are we you, got are, another quarter of a century it, to go. Well, that's mm-hmm. not the reason why. I mean, you could have a day. You don't know. A tornado yeah. could hit you today. But I'm just, I know. this I is a good age for right me. Here. What? <laughs> I could drop dead right here. I know. Me too. <laughs> could just, that could be his. That could no, be his. I like this age. Thank you very much. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. We have a guest who has written a book about that. And uh, in, in addition to, I think, preparing for uh, what you might be getting into. We, we have a, a unique situation that, that uh, I wonder how many people have something similar as far mm-hmm. as finances because we write, so we get residuals. But Yeah. Uh, Scott Page is on the phone. He writes. He wrote a book. It's he called does. It's Never Too Late, Getting Older, Wiser, and Worry-Free in Our Golden Years. Scott has contributed to the big guys, Fox Business Network, Huffington Post, The Wall Street Journal, 2020, Newsweek, The New York Times. So it's quite an honor to be able to say he's on our show. He's the president and chief executive officer of the Lifeline Program. Good morning, Scott Page. Good morning, sir. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from sunny Atlanta, Georgia. Is it sunny there right now? It was storming about an hour ago, and the sun came out, and everything's cleared up, and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. And did, did the temperatures drop right away? It, it actually rose a little bit. Oh, it uh, rose. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, we're getting we're getting something right now. On the other side of this storm, they say we're getting <laughs> cool temperatures. So, <laughs> This is what happens when you get older. You talk about the weather. <laughs> And it's a pleasure to be able to do so. <laughs> I do have to say, though, that, that uh, Scott looks like uh, Burt Reynolds used to look when Burt Reynolds was younger. So Scott's pretty dashing. Oh, you're a good-looking guy. He is. He's dashing. You don't look old at all. If you got rid of that beard, you would look even younger. <laughs> I, I keep that so I can display my wisdom. You know, right here. <laughs> wisdom, and I want to look as wise as human. <laughs> uh, you know what's clever? Clever on the cover is the, uh, oh gosh, to- the time, re- what do you call that guy? The, the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper, yeah. thank you. A shadow. A shadow <laughs> yeah, of the Grim that's, Reaper. that's pretty cool. So tell me about yourself. Why, why did you write this book? What does it mean it's never too late? Well, I think it's exactly that. You know, it's never too late to to plan for your golden years and to make arrangements to make your end of life issues and for yourself and your family a much easier. Um, I, I don't want to say enjoyable experience because it's not that, but a much easier experience for for everyone. Uh, and, and the book, you know, was was really written. Uh, it, was a, it was a seven year labor of love, and it started in one direction, and it, where it ended up was really not providing investment advice for retirement. It's providing more holistic and spiritual and and advice that's basic in its nature, but can really make a difference when it comes to matters such as facing our own mortality. I think Benjamin Franklin put it best, you know, the only guarantee in life is death and taxes. We are all going to die. None of us are superhuman. It's just when is the question. And the sooner we can wrap our head around that concept and plan for it, it can become a much easier transition yeah. for yourself and your family. Do you know what's another sobering reality? When you go into an assisted living facility and you see people who are basically not alive anymore. They they are they're like zombies. Yes. I, very I, sad. I, if I live to be 98 and and from 88 to 98 that's me, I I'd, I'd rather die at 88. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, and I think we'd all like to be like that. You know, quality of life is critical. You know, yeah. I, I take quality over quantity any day. And understanding what what you want your wishes to be in your later years is critical, and that's all part of pre-planning. And, you know, I touch on some of that in the book as well, and, and how to engage in the discussion with your parents, with yourself, with your loved ones, and, and start actually interviewing and, and bringing up conversations about what would you like your funeral to be. You're closing your eyes and visualizing. Oh, okay, my God. When I go away, what do I want to be remembered? What do you want? What do you want at your funeral? <laughs> I want a huge Dancing celebration. <laughs> you think you got... See, I always wonder, will I see this? I mean... <laughs> What is, I don't even know what to believe about religion. I mean, am I going to see this? 
Because if not, I don't care what you do. <laughs> we we don't know, but you know, the funeral is for your loved ones, and your loved ones want to remember you. And the last thing you want is letting them guess or be emotionally pressured or financially pressured in doing something that you don't really want. And I experienced, I lost two brothers in a six-month period, and one we knew was going to mm. pass away. Mm. And I started engaging in a discussion early with him, and his name was Tracy, and I write a little bit about the book. And I was like, mm -hmm. Tracy, if, what do you want your funeral to be like? And my mother overheard it, of course. She's like, we don't want to talk about that. We're not going to talk no, about that. No, I'm sure she um, didn't. No, you know, no, that's her son. No. Mm -hmm. so we have to. And, and we started engaging in the discussion, and he decided that, and on his own free will and through discussion, he did not want a traditional funeral and a wake. He wanted, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and he wanted a bull roast and a crab feast. And That's the way to do it, yes. Yeah, we invited, we had 150 people. What was we the first a, word, bull? A bull roast, it's where you... You, you roast a whole bull? You, you dig a pit and you... My God. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of roasting a bull. I've never heard, heard of a bull. i heard of a pig, yeah. but not a bull. Yeah. It's delicious. It's I like delicious. beef better than pork, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've never you don't heard want to it. see him looking at you, though, I've while never he's heard roasting. Of it. Is he on a spittle? What are we calling it? Spit. <laughs> yeah, you put it on a spit, and you know, we had this huge celebration with a DJ and people dedicated songs, and they all gave their little eulogy. Did you cry? Everyone cried. Oh, laughed, man. Danced, see, I don't, celebrated. Want, anybody to, I don't and, want anybody to cry. And, it's because they uh, love you. Yeah, well, everyone will cry. And put, you have to mourn. Part what happened, mourn. Uh, if, if you don't mind, how, what happened to your other brother? You said... He, uh, my other brother became tragically ill and developed septus and, and died within four days. Oh, he was very quick. Oh, my gosh. Got infection, gosh. and we were not planning for that one at all. Um, and it was interesting because my, my first brother, Tracy, had died first. So I went through the entire process. I, I shopped for a funeral. I negotiated with the price of caskets. I dealt with the cemetery. I did all of that when I was emotionally stable and in a business mode. And we saved almost $8,000. For yourself, you mean? For, for my brother's funeral. Oh, for your brother. For, yeah, for no pre-planning, getting in there, discussing. You know, I wasn't able, I didn't allow the funeral industry to prey on my vulnerability. Oh, they yeah. They started using words about, you know, you show your utmost respect. You need three days viewing, and you need this gladiator casket with 24 karat, you know, knobs. And look at this beautiful lining. And uh, the vault, you need the best vault on the market. Let's get you in a waterproof vault with a guaranteed lifetime guarantee and I'm like what lifetime what, what, what? you're done living <laughs> <laughs> what kind of life leak what is it going to leak it leaks. dig it up in 20 years to see if oh my god wondering? that would be awful <laughs> jeez but but when you're emotionally distraught it's easy to fall into that trap of wanting to do the best you yeah, can yeah, you know yeah, your yeah. respect and you know yeah. you, that's why you really got to start engaging and understanding our immortality, you know, one of the things I also did to, with the book is there's a, an exercise in there to help you calculate your life expectancy. And I did this. Yeah, I, I did this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live to 86 or something like that. 86, <laughs> well, there's, there's a, more in, in, a, a, a more technical tool on scottpage.com, S-C-O-T-T-P-A-G-E, for life expectancy, which really walks you through and gives you and more accurate depiction of your life expectancy because it gets into a little more detail, but also gives you ideas of what you can do to beat the odds. And I think that's the most important is, you know, get, a, get some idea what your life expectancy is and then start seeing what you can do to increase the odds, whether it's a diet and exercise, whether it's becoming more socially engaged, whether it's because, whether it's becoming, yeah, you know, yeah, feeling yeah. more contributing to society, volunteering, what can you do to spend the rest of your life in the most enjoyable Ways possible. I think the likelihood that we're going to live longer mm -hmm. is all based on how long we live. In, in other words, just this morning there was a story from Tel Aviv, Israel, of all places, that researchers there have figured out a way to stop cancer cells from communicating with other cells. So therefore, they exist, but they don't grow, mm -hmm. and therefore they're not they're not fatal. Fascinating. Yeah. So the longer we live, the more those kind of discoveries are going to be made, and the, and the disease is like, unless. But then you know you turn around, there's always something new. Like this year, it's the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. And you know what it's called? What I call the good news, bad news. The good news is you're going to live longer. The bad news is how the heck are you going to pay for it? Oh, exactly. How are you going to pay for it? Yeah. Yeah, because finances play a huge, huge role in this. I mean, you you might be set, you know, with your. Uh, uh, 
retirement income and then you've got Social Security income. But as you live longer, you have to take care of your own uh, day-to-day living expenses. But then you still want to be able to have money to give to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren for birthdays and go on trips and things like that. That, that, that balancing act is, is very difficult. And one of the things I suggest also is something I learned from my dear friend Betty White, who's 94 and goes oh. to the You know, when you look back at the Golden Girls, which everyone has seen on late-night TV, cohabitation is what I believe the future of retirement is going to be. Where oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> there you go. That's your, what I want. Your fellow's ears are yeah. perked up right yeah, now. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> that you sounds good. You resources. You all live in one, <laughs> under one roof. You know, you bring your wisdom with it. You know, age wisdom. is so underestimated with the wisdom. You may have someone who's a great chef, someone who's a bookkeeper, someone who's musically inclined, someone who may have a health care background, and you all come together and take care of each other. And I think that's good. We used to call that a commune. That used to be called a commune. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's a commune. I know that I'm starting, I've already made deals with two of my lifelong friends that we've decided when we're 70 and we're still alive, regardless of where we're going, we're pulling our resources and living the rest of our lives together. Uh, But they're females. We've had a fun conversation, actually, about a serious (laughs) topic. All right. Scott Page is our guest. It's never too late. Getting older, wiser, and worry-free in our golden years. Let's take a little break, and we'll be right back. Uh, And I'll give you a quick update on the weather. I think the weather's looking pretty good right now, actually. It looks good now. I I think it's uh, clearing. Not clearing up yet, but it's it's getting there. So we'll take a little break and be right back. Where's my button here? Okay, I'll push the button, and we'll be right back. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on The Source. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Come out to the third annual Habitat Strawberry Festival on March 5th, 2016 at the McPherson Government Complex. The goal of this festival is not only to have vendors, food, a car show, a kid's zone, live entertainment featuring the Dane Myers Band, a beauty pageant, and all things strawberry, but also raise funds to build a Habitat home for a family in our community. The Habitat for Humanity Strawberry Festival is open 9 to 5 on Saturday, March 5th, with breakfast served at 7.30. Free parking, free admission. Yeah, I'm that drip coming down from the corner of the room. But where did I come from? I'll never tell. Own dry roof you can and we'll fix it right the first time using quality materials and we'll deal honestly and fairly with you, period. You can find Bone Dry Roofing on their website, Bone Dry Roofing, LLC.com, and Facebook at Bone Dry Roofing, LLC. Do it right before your roof needs a tarp to keep the elements out. Bone Dry Roofing stands behind their work to help make your home safe and secure, plus they have financing available. Remember, if you're not bone dry, then you're all wet. Cookies, 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 cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. When you want something special and fun for any occasion, get cookies. King Cookie in the Paddock Mall in Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. So next time you're in the mall, stop by King Cookie or call 352-237-2557. KingCookieOcala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Cookies! 18 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Wednesday morning. Quick look at the weather forecast. Not the forecast necessarily, but the the weather happening right now. The uh, National Weather Service still has a tornado watch in effect, although conditions look a lot better right now. Uh, but this tornado watch is in effect for Marion County um, until 10 a.m., which is just about 40 minutes away. So... Uh, it looks like we're just about out of the woods with this one, which is good news. And then on the other side of this, looks like some cool temperatures moving in. So just to give you a little bit of a forecast. Um, Scott Page is on the phone up in Atlanta where he already had the weather. I guess it's on an angle, huh? They get it so. first. They get it first. Yeah. Uh, Scott is uh, the author of the book we're talking about. It's never too late getting older, wiser, and worry-free in our 
golden years. And when we left off, Scott, we were basically on the money part of this. So, um, now, finances are, you know, again, is something that you have to plan for. And I touch a little bit about Social Security. You know, when's the best time to take Social Security? And just for some of your listeners who probably are aware of this, but, you know, it starts at 62. And each year you delay between years 62 and 66, your benefit increases 7%. And if you can wait between 67 and 70, <clears throat> the benefits increase 8%. So there's some strategies on, on filing for Social Security, whether you file mm -hmm. jointly or file singularly. And what I found to be extremely helpful, and I know this is going to be hard <laughs> to hear, but the government website, socialsecurity.com, mm -hmm. is extremely helpful and user-friendly and full of information that's easy to understand. Oh, that's good. you got some sirens in the background there, sounds like. Mm -hmm. do you, yeah, do it's, uh, Peach, I'm right next to DeKalb, uh Piedmont Hospital, so I get the ambulance. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, another issue when people have to go to the hospital because they have to weigh the balance about what Medicare pays and then what their private insurance pays. And, you know, I, and, and that is true, and it, it is a balance. And, you know, I, I'm, hopefully the, the country is going to figure out the health care issue coming up very soon and provide health care for everyone in the country. And, you know, no one should have to think about finances versus health care. And, unfortunately, this country is riddled with problems with the health care delivery system. And it is something that you have to consider, you know, if you're going to the emergency room, can you get a doctor? You need a referral. All of those things are very difficult to navigate, <clears throat> which is really helpful to have someone in your life that can be your advocate, whether so, it's a grandchildren, a son, a daughter, a cousin, a nephew, a friend. Someone would help you nav navigate through the health care system is critical. Does the book help us do that? Does it help us sort through the, the confusing parts of all of this? It really doesn't, again, it doesn't touch that much on the financial investment side or healthcare side. It's more advice about what you can do to live longer, some ideas on if you're considering a relocation, some things you should consider about accessibility, do it now. demographic, yeah. healthcare. Um, you know, a lot of the book is about gratitude, and there's some issues in it about spirituality and. You know, I, I, there's a, a chapter in there which was somewhat controversial through a publicist. We decided to go forward, and it's a comparison on religion. And there's been wars and death over religion. We are all praying to a higher power, whether it's Buddha, God, whether you're Jewish, whatever it is. Yeah. It's the higher power that we're all looking up to. Yeah. And regardless of what denomination you're from. Well, that's an American way of looking at things. I, yeah. I, the rest of the world needs to figure this out. Americans mm -hmm. figured this out. We ha exactly. I have no problem having a Muslim friend or a Jewish friend or an atheist friend. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But the rest of the world, it matters. It yeah, does. Um, uh, Hopefully you, they will get over it. Do you know what I, I wanted to talk to you real quickly about? It, is when we talk about, you, you mentioned Social Security, the longer you hold off, the more money you're going to get. Okay. But what if it's not about the money? What if it's about quality of life? What if you say, if I retire at 60, what's the early stage? 62. You get? What if I retire at 62, not so that I can get the Social Security check, but so that I can travel the world, uh, you know, and I won't work, I'll, I'll make money some other way. Is that, to that's me? Also, that's also a strategy. And I think, again, what do you want to spend your golden years doing? Uh, start with just visualizing that and then making a plan. Because the younger you are, the goldener it'll be. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everyone's aging in America. You know, the average life expectancy is increasing. People are living longer. Uh, we were able to conduct a study just based on wealth effect, and it was interesting that the ultra 1% wealthy can make it into their 80s, and after the 80s, it's all about your um, chromosomes and, and, and genetics that's going to carry you into your 90s and 100. Mm -hmm. uh, the wealth effect really wears off once you get to that age. And with traveling and whatever, you're healthy, go out and do it. Because, you know, you don't want to have a regret. It's one of the things we talk about, too, is let's not have any regrets in life. Let's live today like it could be your last day. It's a gift. Enjoy it. Make sure you plan for it. If you decide you want to travel the country, then maybe uh, pulling Social Security is a good thing to do earlier. Um, encore careers. We're seeing a lot of seniors that are using their lifelong experiences and creating revenue streams from them. Whether it's someone who likes to cross-stitch and goes and gets a, a, a booth at the local flea market on the weekend, someone who likes to grow orchids or bake. Um, I don't know if you've seen the movie The Intern with Robert De Niro recently. No. But mm -mm. I found it very refreshing that you've got an elderly senior citizen who's worked 40 years of his life and now coming back into the workforce. 
And we're seeing also companies that are now searching for interns who are retired executives. Really? So let me, mm-hmm. let me, let me ask you about the, the – I know you said not all about the money, but if you did decide to uh, retire at 62 and then you change your mind at 64 – what happens? I mean, do, do you would suspend. You would just suspend. There's a thing called file and suspend with Social Security, huh. where you would just suspend your benefits until you decided to to take them again. And while they were suspended, they would continue to grow. Mm-hmm. They would continue to do that increase, whether it be a seven percent increase or eight percent increase. Oh, one one of the most wonderful statements in the book is aging doesn't have to be scary. Yes, and it doesn't. You know, it's it's a privilege. You know, let's look at that. It gets, if Americans can stop thinking of death and dying and, and this morbid no morbidity around it and turn it into a privilege, it's a privilege to be able to, to get into your 70s, 80s, and 90s. <clears throat> and the wisdom that you carry forward, I'm urging seniors to please share that with the younger generation. I think that it's overlooked, and you know, a lot of times you'll say something to what I call the kids, and the kids roll their eyes, and oh, I'll worry about it when I get your age. My grandfather gave me some of the best advice that I can remember when I was 10 years old. And he had retired, and I was helping him service gumball machines. He had gumball machines all over the <laughs> Oh, that oh was what fun. fun. That it was fun. fun, and my teeth rotted, and I've had crowns since then. <laughs> at, at any rate, I would go on Saturday and Sunday mornings. He'd pick me up, and I'd go around, and we'd collect pennies and nickels. And I said, Paul, Paul, why are you still working? You're supposed to be retired. And he said, son, you've got to continue to take care of yourself. And he goes, and you know, you've got to always have money. And I said, well, how did you make money? And he said, well, I'll give you some advice. If you can buy it for a nickel and sell it for a dime, you're making money. And I took that with me and carried it through my entire professional career. And that little piece, of, I don't even know if he realizes what an impact he had on That's my That's interesting. Life. He probably never really, he, he probably didn't even remember saying it to you. He probably doesn't. And, yeah. you know, things like that where, where you do get older and you start getting wiser and you start thinking back of the things that you've learned, you know, never underestimate the wisdom of the senior. Uh, I have a copy of the book that Scott wrote. It's called It's Never Too Late, Getting Older, Wiser, and Worry-Free in Our Golden Years. If you would like the copy that Scott sent to us, call us right now, 622-9622, and we'll put it on. Uh, on it'll be here waiting for you on the in the shelf, whatever, wherever Robin puts the books. Uh, <laughs> They're protected. Scott, Believe do you have a, a website that we can go to? I do. It's scottpage.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-P-A-G-E.com. And there's some great resources and tools, things to help you get organized, things to help you consider encore careers, things that can help you declutter your mind. Touch real, real quickly before we run. We have about two and a half minutes left. Uh, touch on the uh, the document part of this, the, the wills, the, the, what do you call the living will, all that yeah. stuff. Is that living will, yes. And, and these are critical elements that... Uh, you can find online. You can write one yourself. These are really helping your loved ones and helping you make final decisions if you can. If something happens, you become incapacitated. There's something called a, a durable medical power of attorney. That you are giving someone the right to make a decision for you. I think all of us, if we sit around and talk, nobody wants to be plugged into a machine in a vegetated state for years and days and months and however long. You know, something as simple as a durable medical power of attorney you can dictate. If I can no longer eat and take care of myself and two doctors have decided that I'm brain dead, unplug me immediately. Unplug me. And that's all done through a durable medical power of attorney. A simple will can be as something as simple as you can download online and write out your last will and wishes because the last thing you want to happen is your family to get into a fist fight over that tarnished tarnished silver collection yeah, yeah. oh that yeah. happens people yeah, are such takers hard and do you have children just... scott do you have children no i do not i have dogs you have dogs <laughs> well you don't need to write are you going to write your mem- memoir or have you written a memoir i have not yet <laughs> well that's a very important point too because you have animals if something happened to you tomorrow who would take care of the animals you don't want to see them go to the pound and get euthanized exactly everything you know yeah. i have everything documented and i even gave final instructions to my best friend to be sure to photoshop the photograph they're going to use at my weight so that i can remember so you look good <laughs> so you look good you used the cover of the book just use the book. Yeah, that's right. It's never yeah, too late. Just, yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late. That's what it's just saying on your headstone. It's never too late. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Scott, you're a fun interview. Thank you so much for being on the air with us. Some good advice, some sound advice, and mm-hmm. and, it, and and it is not all about the money. It is about living and, and enjoying life, and and uh, and. Uh, I guess being grateful that we have you on life. Being grateful, yes. Scott, th- thank you for being on the air with us, and you're definitely welcome back anytime. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. That was fun. All right, we will take a little break. Squid McFinnigan calling in from Ireland. I hope. The phones didn't work last time. Let's hope they work today. We'll be right back. (laughs) 